Watch out. Stay to the bottom. Stay to the bottom. He's, he's, he's up on the wall. Watch it on the back stretch. On the back stretch. Just hit the wall. Stay low. Stay low. Tighten up. The H car's leaving. Get him there. In 1998, the promoters of Langley Speedway introduce a unique made-for-television short track racing series. Five races with a $20,000 point fund, with $10,000 going to the winner. The series produced four different winners in the inaugural season, Danny Edwards Jr., Greg Edwards, Eddie Johnson, and Jody McCormick. The series also produced a champion, Mike Bufkin, who didn't get a win during the series, but showed remarkable consistency to take the $10,000 top prize. Mike Bufkin returns to defend his television championship, but this year the stakes are higher. It's hard to believe that anyone will win the title without winning a race. 1999 marks a distinct change in the format for the series, eight races at two tracks, as the newly renovated Southside Speedway joins Langley Speedway in this televised title chase. Southside Speedway boasts a colorful 41-year history that spans generations, both in drivers and fans. Legendary drivers such as Ray Hendrick, Ted Harefield, Sonny Hutchins, Al Grennan, Lenny Pond, Emmanuel Savakis, Bill Dennis, and Butch Lindley all called Southside Speedway home at one time. History is repeating itself with several second and third generation drivers making a name for themselves on the third mile bull ring. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series, presented by East Coast Convenience Centers, where your mom would stop, and Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Round one starts with the grand opening of the new Southside Speedway. New lights, new pits, new front and back stretch walls, along with a new attitude supplied by WW Motorsports principals Dwight Shawback, Wayne Wyatt, and Chuck Hall. Nearly $400,000 in improvements with more on the way. Aside from the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series Round 1, 100 lap event for the Winston Racing Series, late model stock cars, Southside Speedway's Charger Division will start things off with a 30 lap run. Jerry Reed is trackside with the Charger front row, so take it away, Jerry. Chris Hopkins, 1999, is ready to get off to a roar and a bang here. Well, we hope not a bang. The Southside Speedway looks a whole lot different with these new lights out here and everything. you got to be real pleased to be running at a track like this now. Yeah. The track, the track is well lit. Uh, it's a whole lot better from what it was last year. The, the track's far. The track is same. Uh, got a little, le little less traction tonight because it's cold, but I believe we'll be all right. Chris Hopkins is never shy about this, folks. Tommy Tatum, you're coming back. Southside Speedway looks a little different than the way you may have remembered it. You haven't raced a whole lot in the past, but here you're on the outside pole. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while since I've been here. Uh, kind of strange, too. I uh, want to thank you all guys for having us on. And uh, going to have to wait and see what we can do with that two car. Now, Chris Hopkins is tough, but you, you're a competitor who's won many, many races at this racetrack. Uh, the, the new feel of it, though, with the new owners and everything, is that's what's bringing people like you out of the woodwork to come back out here and try it out. I'll tell you what, the track looks beautiful compared to what it, what, what it has looked in a number of years. Um, Wayne's done a magnificent job with it, and, and, and it's going to take some getting used to it. Thanks, Jerry. Chris Hopkins and Tommy Tatum do know their way around here, and along with the other 12 competitors, this should be a great Charger event. We had a chance earlier to talk with Wayne Wyatt, as well as Al Thompson and Jim Irwin, two of the sponsors of tonight's events, about the changes here at Southside Speedway and their sponsoring the events. Wayne Wyatt, big crowd out here. A little chilly night. It hadn't held anybody back. What you guys have done with Southside Speedway is indicative of what you did at Langley Speedway and the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series is starting off right here. How do you feel about all this? Well, it's a great opportunity for all the drivers to uh, get showcased on the home team sports and uh, we're just glad to be able to start it out at Southside Speedway. As you'll see throughout the night, a lot of the improvements we've made here at Southside. We got a lot more improvements on the board, just like we did at Langley Speedway. Take it to one of the top five in the country. This is one of the hardest things you'll ever do, though, is uh, bring a track, uh, put a, pull a track together in about three months, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's been some long nights. It's been a lot of people I have to thank. Uh, the, the list just goes on and on and on, and uh, my hat goes off to all the people out there that helped us get this done. 
like Pop and Linda and all those people in the family. Pop, Sam, uh, Linda, Chuck, uh, Brian, uh, Dave Agason from Dominion Paving and Southampton Motor Speedway. He brought his crew in, did all the paving, did all the gravel work for us. Bill Ellis, Ellis Electric came in and did a tremendous job on the lighting. Uh, Demi Construction did the concrete work and the list just goes on and on. And the drivers love it. They showed it in the driver's meeting. They're feisty as usual, and they don't agree with all the rules. But what the heck, you've given them almost a palace to race in. Well, not only a palace, but also if you win the championship at Southside Speedway and Langley Speedway, it's worth an extra $100,000 to a late model driver. That's a lot of money on the line. Not to mention the fact it's $20,000 total purse for the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series with $10,000 to the winner. So realistically, a driver have a real good year at Southside and Langley could end up with over $300,000 winnings. Not bad. Jim Irwin, Coca-Cola is a name synonymous with auto racing. It's the official soft drink of NASCAR, official soft drink of Southside Speedway and Langley Speedway. To be here on opening night, it's the new Southside Speedway. It's got to be a thrill for you and your company. Oh, we're very excited. Southside Speedway is a long tradition here in Richmond. Coca-Cola is a proud sponsor of Southside and NASCAR in general. Well, the, the drink itself is one of the best. That's the only one I drink. But I want to tell the folks out there, Give us uh, your impression. You've been to Southside Speedway before. What do you think about the changes? I think the changes are outstanding. In the last 30 days, this track has transformed itself. It's beautiful. The improvements they've done are outstanding. I think we're going to have a wonderful race tonight. Well, East Coast has uh, been in racing now for about five years out here at Southside. And, you know, the sales and so on, we, we've seen sales increases every year. It's hard to really determine what racing does for that increase, but I've had so many people say, you know, we go to East Coast because East Coast sponsors race cars out at Southside. So we feel real good about being in racing. And just on a personal note, it's a lot of fun. And everybody else at East Coast is behind the sponsorship 100%. We have a lot of vendors that have come on as associate sponsors. So it's a good package. We have a lot of fun with it, and I think it builds sales. So we're real happy and real excited about Southside out here and all the improvements this year and hopefully there'll be a lot more fans in the stands. And welcome back to Southside Speedway as we get set for the Mid Atlantic Championship. It's Blackheart Motorsports Charger 30. Chris Hopkins on the pole. Tommy Tatum out of Holland Springs on the outside of row number one. Chris Hopkins, the top gun here thus far in Chargers here in 1999. In row number two, it's Randy Adams He's in the J.M. Clements Plumbing Realty Builders Oldsmobile. He's out of Chesterfield, Virginia. Then it's Kevin Minner out of Richmond, Virginia, the number 86 Striper Johns Graphic Chevrolet in row two. Of course, both these drivers also top guns in this division run up front. Number 12, Robert Connor. He's out of Colonial Heights, Virginia. And of course, uh, sponsored by Hardy's. And the number 59 of Gary Spires. He's out of Dinwiddie, Virginia. Row number four, Number five, Ron Hester. He's out of Chester, Virginia. And the number 10 of Tony Minner. He's out of Richmond, Virginia. Probably the most colorful of all the cars out here in row number four. In row five, you got the number 34 of Fred Talley, Jr. He is on the inside of row number five in the ninth starting spot in 10. The number 43 of Warren Lipford out of Richmond, Virginia. Of course, that rounds out your top 10. And the final two rows, the number 98 of Kenny Drumheller and Richmond, Virginia. And the inside of row number six, Mike Dennis, Richmond, Virginia. Gary Burke, Jr., Holly Springs, Virginia. The number six of Steve Leggett out of Richmond, Virginia, rounds out our 14-car field. The lights are out on the pace car. It'll pull out of harm's way. We get ready to go green flag racing. Guys, this ought to be an interesting uh, event with these Chargers. It always is. I mean, a lot of cars and a lot of side-by-side -side racing with these guys. 62 dive down uh, low there. Tommy Tate got a good jump, didn't he? Got down quick. Chris Hopkins in the number two takes the early lead. A good battle for third as Randy Adams and Kevin Men are doing battle side by side at a turn number four. Now, these are late modeled cars. Not well, a whole lot you can do to these things. No, it's a lot of driver. I mean, the only thing you can really do is mess with that tire staggering. They don't allow you to do a whole lot, you know, chassis wise. It's just basically like an enduro car, but they put all the safety stuff. On. Oh, caution is out. Caution is out. Cars will slow down. There's a spin over in turn one and two. That is the number three of Gary Burke Jr. Bring out caution number one. And of course, only one lap of, <laughs> only well, one lap completed, but uh, and these guys will do battle pretty tough. After one, out of 30, there you see the top five. 
We'll be back after these messages. Stay with us. And we're back. As you can see, it is a chilly night here at Southside Speedway. Cold and windy. Very cold. <laughs> Very windy. Kind of warm in here, though. Kind of. I'm starting to break a sweat. Let's take another <laughs> look at it. We got the back end of it, and he just looped it coming out of turn number four. I saw it out of the corner of my eye. I don't know. It yeah. looked like he had help a little bit. Hard, hard to say what looks like help at Southside, though. You know, Frank, it's a tight place to get around. It doesn't take much to get you. This is true. Get you going around. This is true. I have been. It's, a, it's a good excuse anyway. <laughs> We're going to get the green flag once again here in the Blackheart Motorsports Charger 30 lapper, and Hopkins will lead Randy Adams Thank down you. to the. Oh, wait a minute. We lost. Uh, I just noticed he's in the infield. We just lost the number 62 of Tommy Tatum. Yeah, he was he was running pretty good there, too. Not exactly sure what happened to him, but I tell you what, Chris Hopkins' car, it's getting through the corners pretty good, but that thing's handling down the straightaway some kind of good. Yeah, that. I mean, he gets a good one. I mean, he's getting a lot of a good one up off the corner makes that motor look real strong. Randy Adams doing very well in the corners. It looks like to me as they come by the speed shot here. And of course, uh, Kevin Menner is third. Fourth is uh, Robert Connor at Colonial Heights, Virginia. And you see the number smoking. 10 smoking. Tony Menner is smoking right now. The two car just has so much better forward bite coming up off the corner right there. Yeah. Well, he's probably taking his time getting in the corner good and driving the car straight up off the corner. It looks like he might be a little bit loose getting in, but... Uh -oh. See the smoke? I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's a uh, transmission or uh, motor, because these cars run automatic transmission, and with the automatic, it doesn't take much for those to leak anyway, so... Well, Hopkins still leading Randy Adams as they head out of turn number two. You see a lot of the changes as... I mean, we, as uh, commentators, actually are from this area right. and we've seen South Southside Speedway for many years Man, this is a big change and uh, the Chargers the first one to race on it. yeah it's you know talking to Roy Hendrick earlier he said it didn't look this good when it was brand new when his daddy was racing out here so you know it is definitely a uh, big difference I mean it, just with no dirt in the infield this is something new yeah WW Motorsports which is the new promoter for Southside Speedway has done a great job you see a nice pan of it. I mean, it looks bigger than the third of a mile that it is. Yeah, I mean, see, we're not used to all this because we can see the whole racetrack with nice lighting, and most time the dust is flying so bad you only see about two thirds of the racetrack anyway. Yeah, the, the first night I drove at Southside Speedway, I took a flashlight. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Randy Adams almost in the back of Chris Hopkins, and I tell you what, he is driving it down in the corner. Gives him a little tap again, guys. I'm telling you, Randy's car, he's getting in the corner real good, but Chris's car is just so strong up off the corner, you know. It looks like maybe he, I don't know if Randy wait a little bit, maybe when it looks like Chris's car pushes up just a little bit there in the middle to make that turn to get underneath of it. Kenny Drumheller to the attention of his crew. That's the number 98. That's a man with right front going flat on if uh, if the 20 car could ever get to him down the straightaway and push him entering the corner, he might be able to do a little something there. But he he is uh, pulling away on the straightaway. Yeah, the yeah. two car just leaves him so bad down the straightaway, it kind of leaves him helpless unless he can get him right there. Now, yep. in, in my untrained eyes, the number 20 is looks like he's running uh, a little bit better in the corners. He's yeah, got, the, the 20 car is probably a couple miles an hour faster through the corner. But he's, he's losing that much and maybe a little bit more down the straightaway. He closes up in the corners as they come up on some of the lap, tra uh, soon to be lap traffic. Right there was a good shot right there. Yeah, he could have. He could have he helped it just a little bit, beat on that little front bumper there a little bit. Yeah. Steve Leggett and Gary Burke Jr. about ready to go a lap down there. Steve Leggett in the Grease Monkey number six. Southside Speedway is definitely a full contact sport. Yeah. Well, but there's always been one thing that's always been said by most of the guys that have moved on. If you can pass at Southside, you can pass just about anywhere. Yeah, well, I think you learn how to be aggressive at Southside. Yeah, I think it, uh, from racing at Southside, you learn how to drive on the outside. If you're going to pass somebody at Southside, the leaders are always going to have to deal with lap traffic, and they're going to have to be on the outside of them. And with how small the racetrack is and the number of cars, like in the Charger division here. Ooh. Three See, car let him know he was there. Right. Gary Burke Jr. goes down a lap here in this 30 lap event. Blackheart Motorsports, a sponsor of the Charger Division. But, no, like, but I agree with you. You've got to pass on the outside here a you, bunch. I mean, you can sit here and practice all day and you can practice on the bottom of that racetrack, but as you see, every lap, 
I mean, Chris is going to have to deal with Warren right here, getting into, getting into Warren. He's going to have to deal with him on the outside, and you have to negotiate that traffic. If you give your position up too soon, get in the corner, which I've done a couple more times than I can remember out here, have a good run, get in the corner, but you give the inside up too soon, it gives that man a chance. Right. The car's doing him. battle for seventh place, the number 99. That is uh, the driver, Mike Dennis. And the number oh. five, whoa, get a little squirrely there. That's Ron Hester, and he saves it. Good job. That was a great job there. Uh, he he uh, almost lost it because of the 99 there. Well, see, so you can see the gap right now with Chris and Randy. Now, Chris handled that traffic a little bit better, and Randy had a, well, here we go, a little replay. We'll look and see what happened with the number five, of course. So it looks like the 99 of Mike Dennis also loose up off the corner. Look at, look at that, that right that, rear. It was shaking. Man. It looks like the five, though, he was worried about the 99 crashing, and he got yep. on the binder so hard that he actually almost caused himself to crash. Right. But that's, you'll see it all night at Southside. It's just, that's the type of racing it is. Yes, sir, exactly. Oh, whoa, oh, Gary hold. Burke. Of course, we're closing in 10 laps to go. Look 10 like laps to go here in the 30 lapper for the Chargers, Black Heart Motorsports Charger 30 lapper. Looks this like we're getting ready to uh, break in the, into pit wall there. Yeah. <laughs> See they got, a, they got a couple tires there, though. Yeah, but we, somebody might try to scuff that paint on that new pit wall this evening. But uh, as you can see, like we're talking about the lap traffic, Chris has handled it so well, and Randy, you know, Chris can pass the lap corner straight away and leave it for Randy in the corner. And I right. mean, that, re that right there is five, maybe even ten car lengths, and that's a lot. When you're trying to get around a guy that's beating you down the straightaway to begin with, you need a it kills you when he leaves you in the corner like that. Well, we're closing in on the end of this event. Yeah, it's, it's laps all are, uh, Laps go quick here on this third mile. As you see, you're Robert Connor as uh, he sits, I think, a fourth. He's sitting fourth behind Kevin Minner. It's all in where you catch the traffic. You know, if you catch him down straightaway, you're, you're definitely in good shape. We're talking to Robert and them guys earlier. They were talking about they got a Monte Carlo nose on that thing and a Thunderbird. <laughs> back on it. They couldn't <laughs> figure out what they wanted to call it. But they've done a nice job with it. That thing look, really looks sharp. There's a couple of other drivers as they battle for fifth and sixth spot. Of course, the six is Steve Leggett. He has a lap down. 34 is Fred Talley Jr. He's moved up from the ninth spot, currently uh, in fifth. So yeah. that's, a, that's a good run for him. He's a yeah. rookie. Well, you got his crew chief now, his father. By the way, five laps to go. His father has made quite a few laps out here at Southside in the chart, I mean, in the Grand Stocks and everything. And he's won his He's won a couple races out here, and his, Mr. Talley knows how to get around this place. But, you know, these guys here with these Charger cars, I mean, have you ever seen a nicer field of cars? I know it's the first race of the season, yeah. but you come out in, in July and August, and they still look this good. These guys take a lot of pride in their race cars. Oh, and Randy, Randy's got a run on the two here. Yeah, almost got under uh, Steve Leggett. Almost helped uh, Randy Adams out, of course. They're trying to get around the number five of Ron Hester. And Randy Adams looking to the inside. Nowhere to go, though. Hester lap to traffic. the bottom. Lap traffic. You know, I mean, Hopkins using the, uh, the using the cars properly as a pick. So. Sure. But you notice, I mean, even though this is a learning division, these guys are leading this race, and they come up on this lap traffic. You know, you got to give it to these guys. They know where they're at on the racetrack. They give the leaders plenty of room to race, you know, and let them decide it. It's not going to be decided by, you know, a, a mistake by a lap car. White flag is out. And of course, that Inside means one thing. One third of a mile. Yep. And Randy Adams working awful hard. And I tell you what, uh, the num number 99 of uh, Dennis trying to get out of the way. Good sportsmanship move. Sure. But it's going to be Chris Hopkins across the stripe first. Randy Adams third, uh, second. Third's going to be Kevin Minner. Fourth is going to be Robert Connor. And Fred Talley Jr., first race in the Charger. I know, I know his father's proud because I talked, like I said, talking to him earlier. He was, you know, stressing to him just, you know, you need to make your laps well, and finish. I want to make a point here because a lot of times these smaller divisions don't have a lot of cars at the beginning of the season. He started with 14. That's the most I've seen at the beginning of a season in the Charger division in a long time. Yeah, like I said earlier, I mean, in nice race cars, too. I mean, Chris Hopkins, there, he works on the stock car products. And I mean, he, he's very familiar. He builds a lot of these late models you'll see running tonight, you know, so. His dad is an accomplished crew chief. Yeah, so I mean, these guys do a nice job. They work real hard, and I'm real glad to see Chris win this evening. Chris uh, last year showed us something in 1998, and it looks like he's going to be the guy to beat in 1999. Yeah. He won a few races last year towards the end of the season when uh, 
you know, uh, Michael Greyhouse was in a division, and Michael Greyhouse was just, he would just kill him. And when you beat a guy like Greyhouse last year, you've done something. It's not like they've handed it to you. Randy Adams did a great job in trying to get that top spot. But I'll tell you what, let's send it down to Jerry. Look like they're uh, getting ready to look into the cockpit and talk to uh, Chris Hopkins here. And uh, let's do Get that microphone out of the way. You didn't have to use the radio except when Randy Adams was coming on you. Tommy Tatum fell out early, and Randy was challenging you hard at the last. But that is what the Charger division is all about at Southside Speedway. I tell you what, I got to get this a little bit closer because she won't come off the corner like it was last year. I don't know if it has to do with the tires I run from last year <laughs> or if it was a coat just to, just, to, just the way the track was tonight. But I... Randy was tough. He could have turned me around a couple of times, and I appreciate him driving me clean. I, li I would do the same thing for him. Well, East Coast and Coca-Cola are sponsoring this night, and you put on a good show for the fans out there. Tommy Tatum looked like he was going to come with you, but his drive shaft fell out on him, and that, that happens from time to time. Randy's a cumber, though. He's somebody you've got to watch in your rearview mirror. He's going to be tough, I can tell you that, because he was tough tonight. I was looking in my rearview mirror a few times, and I, I thought he had me a couple of times, but, you know, he... He start, was nice about it. start off 99 with a win. Good feeling. Especially my mom's birthday, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's your winner, Chris Hopkins. We're going to go back here and catch a second place finisher right now. Come on along with me. Randy, come here, baby. Man, I'm telling you, Tommy Tatum fell out with a drive shaft problem, but you really had something for me at the end if there hadn't been a lap car in the way. I think if we would have got the pole, I think we could have won. But uh, we had a distributor problem. We had to change distributors right before the race, and... Uh, but we got to come out here and had a second place finish. We had fun doing it. And you're running against the best when you're running against Chris. He's proved it. Yep, that's it. So you you looking forward to a good year? We'll be ready for it next week. All right. Thank you very much. Guys, we'll take it back up to you. and We'll catch up with third through fifth in just a second. You know, that was uh, kind of opposite of what we thought. We thought he was getting up well, off the corner good. I hate to see him when he really gets running good off the corner. Well, let's send it back down to Jerry as we watch Chris Hopkins in victory lane as they take the pictures and do all the good stuff. What do, you, what do you think about the crowd that's out here to watch you do this, too? This is great. Uh, Wayne White and the guys out here have really done a fantastic job. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank the good Lord for getting me through this race without a scratch. Uh, I think my transmission's slipping a little bit, but uh, we're going to get a new one this week anyway. So, God is good. This fans are great. Look at this. The, 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 uh, the, the stands are packed. Uh, there's lots of race cars out here. Uh, it, this is, I'm looking forward to this season. I'm excited. And uh, I want to thank everybody for what they've done uh, with the track, uh, Wayne White, and, and, uh, and all the sponsors that are on all these race cars. Uh, we can't do it without the sponsors. And uh, uh, they're, they're the backbone, you know. Uh, and uh, these race cars, we're, a lot of, we're having a lot of fun, but uh, these sponsors are where, are where it counts. Uh, Striper John's Graphics, um, Grease Monkey, man, uh, they've been great to me. Connor Brothers Body Shop. Uh, on Grove Road, uh, we got a new shop out there, and it's and it's doing great, beautiful shop. And uh, I thank you guys for promoting us like you are, uh, Jerry. Uh, you and uh, you are the heroes. Uh, no, you guys are the heroes. Are the <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> hey, did you hear what you said? We're the heroes. No, they're not. These drivers are the heroes, and Mr. Minter is one of them. Third place finish tonight. You know he's going to be a strong contender for the championship all year long. Freddie Talley Jr., yes, sir. great start to a season. I mean, you have, you got some people uh, with some uh, real talent, and so do you have talent in front of you on this one. Fourth place, not bad? No, it's not bad for my first race ever. I didn't think. I was expecting to finish about 10th or so, but, you know, I'm just grateful everybody drove me clean and all because I could have got taken out a couple times, but people really respected me, I guess. You said first race ever. And a, and a race car. I raced go-karts for a little while. But I, I thought you had some experience at Capital City Speedway and yeah, uh, tracks I like that. Yeah, a track championships there, and I ran uh, state series. I got, like, second in that, so it's not too bad. Hey, good start to 99. Well, I appreciate it. All right. All right. Connor. Robert Connor, from one interview to the next, we want to put you on TV. That'll Tell you, Coke, East Coast Coca-Cola sponsoring this race night, and uh, Mid-Atlantic Championship Series is running here, the first of eight races. You guys are on television. We're loving it, and the Charger division once again proves, hey, it's got some excitement and some good talent. Oh, this is where it starts at. And this, this to me, this is the best one out here. The, the expense on it is down uh, from moving up to another level, and you can't get any better race. And, and this is just the first week. We'll get more cars out here, get back to a full field. It'll be great. Uh, had a good run. Thought we were going to do a little better. It was going to get a little bit 
at the end, but uh, what I just told him, I said our oil light came on. I was only running about 20, 25 pounds of pressure. And I'm saying, oh, we don't want to cook this motor. We got off the track, damn it, overheated. We puked over there, but we'll be back next week, and maybe we'll go for it again. So Hey, some young drivers like Freddie Talley Jr. coming out straight out of go-karts, finishes right in front of you. They never quit coming, do they? They never do. I'm the old man in this division. I'm probably the oldest one out here, and that's... Uh, but uh, I think probably I've got a little bit more patient with it. So yeah, now the idea is don't, you know, have to win. Just finish and you'll come home. So, But we'll be back uh, next week and hopefully with some more cars and support Wayne Wyatt's effort and uh, get these sponsors their money's worth. So. All right. Okay, thank you. Hey, Robert Connor is very happy just to be here. He doesn't mind that these young rookies are coming into this division and trying to steal some of his thunder. Guys, great Charger race as usual at Southside Speedway. Back up top to you. See you later in the late model race. Hopkins and Adams definitely made it a, a race out of this thing. You see the place they finished in and where they started in parentheses in. Mike Dennis did a great job. He started 12th and his 7th. He was a lap down. Hey, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to have a late model event coming your way. Winston Racing Series late model stock car is about ready to take action here at Southside Speedway for round one of the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series. And of course, Jerry Reed is down trackside with our pole sitter, Bugs Harefield. Let's go down there right now. Opening round of the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series, Southside Speedway's been your home, your dad's home for years. Yeah, out here it's a cold night, but there's a big crowd in the stands. You're Mr. Inside. How are them rumble strips going to treat you? Oh, they don't bother me a bit. You, you definitely know when you run on them, but uh, they don't bother me at all. And uh, Well, it's opening night. I'm supposed to, supposed to be up here on opening night. I have been for the last two or three years. Uh, hopefully we can continue tonight, but this stop strategy might be a little bit different, and, but uh, hopefully we can come out on top. Well, you're no stranger to Victory Circle here, and you know how to win. And I guess being on the pole is a good place to be. Since you said you'd like to start in the back, this will be okay, won't it? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with starting right here tonight anyway. It <laughs> makes, makes it a little bit easier on me out to start. Uh, they move Victory Lane. You'll help me find it if I can, if I can pull it off. Yeah. Oh, okay. No problem. We'll help you find it. Thank you. Thank you, Bugs. Hey, come on over here and talk to the man on the outside. We've got Greg Edwards, the Langley Speedway champion, who's running at Southside Speedway. He's buckling up and getting ready to go, putting his helmet on. Like Greg Edwards, pull that window up and let's talk to you for a minute. You got Mr. Inside, inside of you. You're on the outside. That's almost like playing right field in a Little League game. It's a, it's a place to be, but it ain't the best one. Well, I mean, at least we, we got a pretty clear view in front of us for right now. But, uh, you know, Bugs is awful tough here. He can probably drive this place blindfold. He's been around us so much. So, uh, you know, we'll just try to get in line the best we can and uh, get a little pit stop deal done and, and try to have a clean race. This is one of the best starting positions you've been in at Southside Speedway in your trips up here, isn't it? Yeah, the, we've got a great car and uh, got a great team to put us here. And, uh, you know, we're just, we're just lucky enough to buzz off a pretty good lap. We just got edged out a little bit there by Bugs. But I'd like to thank my sponsors, Hutchins Chevrolet, Eagle 97, Danny's Glass, Senate Simone, RPG, and Formal Masters. All right, rock and roll. Third place. Starting on the grid, you got Bugs Harefield in front of you and Greg Edwards up there in second place. This has got to make you feel good to start off the year with the uh, Mid-Atlantic Championship Series. Yeah, this is a good start for us. Um, we've been running pretty good in practice, but we didn't, you know, we didn't really know what to expect in qualifying. But hopefully, we can keep it up here all night and have a good run tonight. Can you push your way past these two guys? I don't know. We might just follow them here for a while. You know, we got this pit stop deal, so. We'll have to see how that's going to work, too. So I don't know how much passing you need to do until after the pit stop. That might, you know, you might just waste your time here in the beginning. Lots of things different. A different speedway. East Coast and Coca-Cola are sponsoring this race tonight. Going to be on television. I guess Wayne Wyatt and the guys are doing a good job for the drivers. Yeah, he's done a, he's done a great job. We haven't been here in a couple of years, and, I mean, he's done a great job with the racetrack. That's one of the reasons we decided to come back here and race because, you know, it's close to our house, and um, it's it's improvements are great. Good. Chris Evans starting third. He's got a good spot. We're going to drop on back over here to Eddie Johnson. who's starting on the outside. He's another guy like Bugs Harefield. 
no stranger to this racetrack at all. Eddie Johnson, maybe it's not the pole position, but this is not a bad spot to start in on a night like tonight. No, it's not. Uh, it's a real tight field, and they're asking forward. Casa Grande, new restaurant, uh, come on board with us, and feel like we got a good shot for the race tonight. The car's been handling real good. I've been happy with it in practice, and look forward to having a good race here. Two guys up front of you. Chris Evans is over here. This is one of his best qualifying positions, but the two guys in front of you, Greg Edwards and Bugs Harefield, they're no strangers to Eddie Johnson. No, they're not, and there's a whole lot of good drivers here, and, you know, Chris is up and coming, and wish him a lot of luck, and, you know, hopefully he'll finish the race, and we'll be able to come back and run some more, but, uh, you know, we're just happy to be here. Looking forward to getting some racing in, looking, and hopefully we can end up and win the circle by the time this is over with. You're also one of the few people representing the Ford in this racing circle around here, too. Well, that's kind of been a known for us for over 15 years now, and it's been real good to me, and Coleman Rice supplies us with the financial aid to run this Ford, and as long as he can do that, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to drive it, and we've got a good combination. Eddie Johnson, he's starting fourth, and he has won over 100 feature late mile stock car races in his career. Look for him to go to the front. And thanks, Jerry. Of course, 23 Warriors about ready to go do battle. I'm Dave C. along with Frank Daney Jr. and Chris Phelps will be your commentators for this. Mid-Atlantic Championship round number one race for the NASCAR Winston Racing Series late model stock cars. And uh, what a field of cars we got tonight. Bugs Harefield and Greg Edwards on row number one. It ought to be a great race. There's your race analysis. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back on the other side of it. And welcome back to Southside Speedway as we get set to give you the starting grid for the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series round number one. And of course, uh, what an event this was last year. Mike Bufkin, obviously, uh, the champion, and he's gonna try to defend it. Let's give you the starting lineup. In row one, it's Bugs Harefield. He's turned a few laps here, folks. And he's driving a Chevrolet Monte Carlo to the outside of him is Greg Edwards. He's also driving a Chevrolet, but guess what? That's not his picture. <laughs> Danny's got a twin now. Uh, in row number two, the number 92 of Chris Evans driving a Pontiac into his outside. The only Ford in the field, Eddie Johnson and a Ford Taurus in the number 57. You see their speeds and what they what separate them. In row number three, Chris Dotson. He's out of Richmond, Virginia. He's driving a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Mike Lee. That's driving a Chevrolet. He's driving the sponsor's car, East Coast Convenience Stores. And of course, in row number four, the number 64, Richard Jarvis, got to give him the Long Haul Award all the way from Ocean City, Maryland. He's in a Chevrolet, and to his outside, Rodney Estes in the number 84 Pontiac in row number four. In row number five, Danny Edwards in a Pontiac, the number 26. Of course, he was very strong in 1998 down at Langley Speedway. And to his outside, they call him the Intimidator, Wayne Patterson, the number 14. He is driving the Chevrolet as well. He's out of Amelia, Virginia. In row number six, the number 94, Jim Sink. In a Chevrolet Monte Carlo, he ran a 14-730. In the Diamond Homes, Star Homes and Chevrolet. And to his outside, the number one of Lynn O'Neill, also driving a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. In row number seven, the number 42 of Phil Warren, the five-time Langley track champion, has also run up here at Southside on several occasions. He's driving a Pontiac. To his outside, Tommy Cherry in the number 87, driving a Chevrolet. I think that's actually backwards, I think. Yep, it is. Uh, positive of that. In row number eight, the number 81 of Mike Bufkin. There's your defending champion. And the number 51 of Rusty Wood. He is driving a Chevrolet. Of course, did not get a picture of Rusty Wood. In row number nine, the number 33 of John State. He is driving a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And in the number 11, the flying 11 colors, Chuck Hendrick, third generation driver of Roy and Ray Hendrick, father and grandfather. And row number 10, the number 19 of Chris Steffi. He is in a Pontiac. And to his outside, rookie 95, Anthony Wilson in a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Sponsored by K95 in Little Texas. And in row number 11, the number 24 of Henry Jones. He is a, and driving a Pontiac, he is a Langley competitor. To his outside, the number 12 of Bubba Farmer. He is in a Pontiac, and he is out of Sandston, Virginia. And bringing up the rear of the field in 23rd place, the number 98 of Larry Morgan in a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Of course, that is your starting lineup 
for tonight's round one Mid-Atlantic Championship Series race. And we got a couple in cars for you. Number six of Mike Lee carrying the Jack Link's Meat Snacks in car. It's some good shots for you tonight. And uh, see uh, 57 of Eddie Johnson just up in front of him. Chris Dotson as well. Always get some good stuff out of these things, guys. Yeah, with it being cold this evening, you see Mike running tires back and forth. He's trying to put a little heat in them, but he's also trying to knock all that dirt and everything off of them from earlier races. Now, it is cold out here, guys. I mean, it, it is extremely, it is cold. extremely cold out here. What does that do to the car? Depends. <laughs> hopefully, um, uh, hopefully they're set up for this cold weather. Sometimes if uh, you're used to running in the heat, you don't know how your car is going to react when you go to the colder weather. Well, it was a little warmer today. We're also in the number 81 of Mike Bufkin, the defending champion of Coca-Cola in-car camera. And we should get some good pictures from both these guys. Mike Lee, a, a tough competitor here at Southside Speedway. Mike Bufkin, the defending champion, he can run just about anywhere. Yeah, I mean, Mike, when he, you watch these guys, you know, you see them in Langley, they run good. Langley's a flat racetrack, but they also run good at Martinsville. So you're probably looking at some of your better flat track drivers in this area between Southside and, and Langley. There's the green flag. We're underway here in the 100 lap event. Not a lot of time and to And they're think. stacking them up. Oop. Bugs Harefield spinning in turn number one. That's pole setter. The pole setter, but guess who got him? Number 97 and him were, were battling pretty hard. As there you but, see Eddie Johnson. It'll Eddie be a John complete it'll be a complete restart, folks. Eddie Let's Johnson always seems to come out unscathed <laughs> and stuff like that, though, you know. But Eddie's a guy that we were talking about the cold tires and everything. Now Buck doesn't he knows the situation. He's he's you know, here we go. Take a look at it. Oh Greg. Greg Edwards. Greg got him. Just Greg gave him a whole lot of help there. Right. Now, look where Not Eddie Johnson is. Eddie Johnson's on the outside and from the fourth spot. He was he was poised to go past them anyway. Well, in that situation. Look at, look at the 92 and the 6. Yeah. They almost yeah. had an incident there. Stacked but, up the whole field. Take another look at it. Tell you what, Greg, Greg helped him. Yeah. Oh, definitely. But we were talking about the cold tires and everything. Bugs has been around Southside for a long time, and it might be one of those situations to where he's not, he's going to take his time running up off that corner to where Greg really wants to go. And this is a racetrack where you got to be aggressive, but you got to show those patience. And I'm sure, you know, well, I would hate to think, I don't believe he's done anything intentional the by it. Yeah, the tires no. on Bugs' car are not cold anymore. No, and, and neither is the man in the seat. <laughs> well, but you watch Bugs here, he's really going to have to run strong, and he knows what he, if he hadn't hurt the car in any way, he may have knocked the toe in out and running over the rumble strips or whatever. But you, excellent driver at Southside Speedway. Between him and Eddie, they've just won a ton of races. So. Oh, it, it you Bugs know, Harefield coming from the back ought to make this. Oh, this ought to be exciting. I'm going to tell you what, I wish we had the in-car camera in 04. Yes, sir. Because, I mean, you can see a guy go around his place on the outside. We've seen it a number of times over the years. He's going to kill him. Of course, Bugs Harefield, a second-generation Southside Speedway driver. Of course, his father, the famous Ted Harefield. Sure. I mean, Eddie Johnson and, and Cal Johnson raced out here for years. And like I said, with, with Chuck Hendrick and with Roy Hendrick and Ray. And there's just so many guys that run this racetrack. You know, Tommy Ellis, Sonny Hutchins, and Jeff Bodine's been out here. You know, Richard Petty. Bobby Allison. All of them have been have made an appearance at Southside Speedway one time or another. So the owners of the track are still the Wilkinsons. Yeah. Of course, Mr. Wilkinson is no longer with us. But uh, Mrs. Wilkinson uh, yes, still owns a track. Yes, they, they've owned it since 1959. They've seen some people come. I mean, some great race car drivers have come through this place. And it's, you know, you look at the racetrack, it looks real tight, but it is a two-groove racetrack. You can race on the outside. So We've seen Wayne Patterson, Bucks Harefield, Eddie Johnson, uh, a lot of drivers use that outside uh, groove. Hey, the, the guys that race here a lot, you can see them use that outside. It's work to their advantage. Well, we're going to try to get it re-going as they just moved the, the inside row up. That Chris put, Evans uh, had a Chris good Evans, jump. Yeah, Chris Evans. Good start. Pulling up there. Chris Evans in that number 92 Retalix Auto Parts Pontiac. And he'll he'll pop out in front of uh, Greg Edwards. Now, Chris has had some experience here also in the uh, Modifieds. And yep. he's won quite a few races in those Modifieds. So he's no stranger to this place. Want to point out, folks, come lap 20, and before lap 90, 
you're going to start seeing some folks come into pit lane. They're going to have to do a green flag. Jack and go. What that means is we've got the uh, jack the left side tires up off the ground, drop it and go. And it has to be done between lap number 20 and lap number 90. Now the track had voted to do it under yellow. The drivers, the drivers voted for green. green because they thought it would be <laughs> safe. Yeah. And so let's, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We, we got, you know, Nothing. several laps to go before we probably start seeing some. I expect to start seeing some somewhere around 20 laps. I'm going to tell you what, Chris Evans has impressed me. I mean, just for a few laps here, I mean, he his car is running. Usually you can get out there to that lead, but a guy like Eddie or Mike Lee or somebody is going to come on up there and take it away from you right away. And he, well, really uh, nobody's challenging him yet. Just some uh, point to bring up, too, is uh, Chris has been running at South Boston Speedway the last couple of years and uh, been battling up there pretty hard. You know. I think he's got his car that's working pretty good just about wherever he goes now. Uh, Chris Dodson's a guy watching him here. He he has been extremely fast during practice and everything. And I, I believe talked to him a little bit after qualifying. And he just didn't really get the lap that he wanted. I think he went out a little bit later than he thought he was going to go. And I think it cooled off a little too much for him. There you see the 14 of Wayne Patterson. He's already starting to look to the outside. Well, I mean, look where all the race cars are out there to the inside. You're going to have to drive around these people on the outside. Danny Edwards, uh, Lynn O'Neill doing battle for ninth. And Danny's going to keep that spot. Lynn O'Neill on the outside. Here comes Tommy Cherry in the number 87. First time ever at this track. That's all right. Tom, Tommy Cherry will get with him. He'll, uh, he'll let him know he's there before the day's over. And coming up through the back of the pack, already battling for 14th, is Bugs Harefield. And he's battling the number 81 of Mike Bufkin. And that right there that shows you. I mean, Bugs knows what he has to get on the outside to get around these guys. And Mike's going to have to get it. 81 out there and he's gonna have to drive around him on the outside or he's gonna go a lap down real quick. Well Bugs, oh, 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 oh. Oh. we got some big one. Mm. Oh boy. Chris Dodson started it. He spun over there in turn one and two. He gathered up Lynn O'Neill. His car looks terrible. Rodney Estee, Bugs, Harefield, Danny Edwards, Mike Bufkin. Oh, and uh, Wayne Patterson, you talking about a bunch of guys that can win that well, maybe don't have a chance now. No. Hey. Wow. Danny's car is tore up. I don't know, that, it's hard to tell with those cars. It looks like a lot more. They'll rip the door off that thing. He'll be ready to go. And of course, Chris Evans in the Retallic Auto Parts Pontiac. Mm. When you see uh, the number 84 of Rodney oh. Estes, his Pontiac is bent up pretty bad. I would say that that would, oh, look at Lynn I, I would say that one's hurt right there. Lynn's car is hurt. Like when he tried to pull off out of that rear, he got the bouncing around on him. So you check the wheels out on that. Yeah, the wheels are car. bent on, bo on both the front and back. And none of them have any air in it, so I don't think he's going no, to he's not going anywhere. And of course, there's Wayne Patterson in the Herald's uh, Chevrolet, number 14. Amazing, right. Estes is not leaking water. I, I would expect that much damage on the front end of your car that there's going to be some radiator damage. Well, got lucky. You see some of the competitors, Danny Edwards, as well as Wayne Patterson, going to come in yeah. to make repairs because NASCAR's not going to let them continue around the track. Mike Bufkin coming in, and boy, he got. Oh, uh, boy, he really got roughed up. Look at the damage on that car. I don't know how bad Danny's is. If he got hit right there in the door and just tore up that uh, sheet metal on the door, it's not going to hurt his car too bad. No, as long as he didn't hit any of the tires. Right. Yeah. Great job by Chris Evans the, this, this far, guys, as we watch Wayne Patterson come out of the pit area. He's taped uh, that, uh, that fender back up with a little duct tape. That's, uh, That's a little damage on Chuck Hendricks flying 11. Those are some famous colors there, folks. That uh, 92 is an A and E race car, by the way. Uh, only one in the field, I do believe. Like I said, you got a lot of car builders around. I think, uh, like Chuck Hendricks' car, that's built by Creech Motorsports. And you have Eddie Johnson's cars at Townsend car. And you got, I think, uh, Mike Bufkin's car. I think this one he has here is a Savakis car. And Bugs Harefield's is a Savakis car. So they, you know. And Danny Edwards is a Hedgecock car. Right. Hitchcock. So. You got just about all of them. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Even think, at a small track like Southside. I think we've got them all represented here. Yeah. I, I know that Chris Dodson's is a uh, is a Hedgecock. So I mean, uh, at least one of everyone here. Is so. there a Childress car in the field? I think that's the only one we're missing. I'm not really sure. I didn't really pay that much attention to all of them. I, uh, I don't think so. I think that's <laughs> the only one we're missing. Yep. Let's take a look and see what happened. Lynn O'Neill, Tommy Cherry doing battle as they come down across the stripe. See what oh, Looks Chris like Dotson and Wayne Patterson. Oh, ahead of the field. Looks and like Wayne might have got a got a hold of him. Just might have helped him out a little bit. But 
Once that happens, though, it's a parking lot. Yeah, it. You really don't have a whole lot of room to go anywhere. So. Mike Bufkin hits Estes hard. Look at Chuck Hendrick get on the binders. Uh, John State down on the bottom. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. And That's we're going to be shot. inside of uh, Mike Bufkin's car. Everybody, um, Bugs here still trying to go to the out. outside, spreading out. There's, There's nowhere, nowhere to for go. Him to go. They spread out, and there was nowhere for him to go. Oh, wow. that hurts. Yeah, I think I think Bugs saw that a little bit quicker than uh, Mike did, because you, if you see from up top, Bugs just drove right. around the outside. And right. Up. So here you go. Here's another. See, there was nowhere for Mike to go, though. The 94 was in his Down way, the and then Bugs was up top. So it's like he had to split the hole, but there was no hole. Right. Danny's car didn't look like it got uh, beat up too bad, as you see them trying to work on uh, Mike Bufkins, the defending champion, not having a great race for the first first round here in the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series. As the crew works on the stage drive, we're going to take a uh, quick break. When we come back, we'll have more of this Mid-Atlantic Championship round one race. Stay with us. Here's your top five. Series. There's our blimp cam. There's, there's hey. our blimp. The blimp. Crow's Nest Photography supplying the aerial footage that you'll see tonight. Wow. And guys, watch it. Wow, he's way up there too. Notice going down into turn number one right now, and Chris Dotson and and uh, just piles them up. Yeah, looks like uh, Wayne was down trying to the end. Looked like Chris tried to get by. Here's full speed, folks. This is what it feels like in a car. Strap yourselves in because this is gonna hurt. <laughs> no one. Not good. <laughs> that, Folks, if you can see the faces of, uh, of Chris and Frank, this is not what you want. They we've seen it before, okay? We've <laughs> seen it before yeah. from the... I've been there, okay? I believe my foot hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten laps on the board. We're getting ready to get the green flag. Chris Evans will get him going out of turn number four. Gets a good jump. Real good jump. I mean, doing him a good job getting around this racetrack, taking his time. And Evans out of turn number two, down the back stretch. Look at Eddie Johnson beginning to work on the 97 already. Yeah, Greg's car is starting to like it's getting a little bit loose getting there to the middle of the corner. And it, it, you don't want to start doing that now. No, he looks like, oh, oh, there you go. Eddie's showing him the little blue horn there. That's right. But like you said, it's so hard to tell here if you get such a good run off the corner, you don't want to give that up right away, you know, because there's somebody right behind you. If you check up, it's going to be a mess. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Greg just looks like he's got a weight on his car just a little bit more than it. Whoa, oh. and we got a spin. It is the number 24. Of course, that is Henry Jones. Caution is out once again on the track. And we'll revert back to lap 11. You know, with all these cautions flying, this uh, it's going to be hard to come in for a pit. Chris Evans is leading the pack. Greg Edwards, Eddie Johnson, Mike Lee, and Richard Jarvis, your top five. And Henry Jones right there. Didn't feel like he did do any damage. No, I just, I mean, he just spun around down there, so. Take a look at it. Oh, three, three, wide. three wide, that explains it. <laughs> yeah. Three wide at Southside. And I'm Chuck Hendrick, uh, also uh, in, in kind of the meat, in the middle of the sandwich, but you get that far out at Southside, you're hey. going around. Hey, I tell you what, Chuck that, Hendricks did a heck of a job saving it. Looks like, looks like his daddy almost on it. <laughs> and look at Chris <laughs> Evans, bit. boy, did he just Chris miss. Dotson, I mean, he snuck through there, didn't he? I mean, Chris, not Chris Dotson, not Chris Evans. Chris Dotson was saying, not again. <laughs> <laughs> when it happens here, it happens quick. I mean, you'll see how short those straightaways are. You, you, looks like you have a lot of time, but no, you're no. using so much brake getting in that corner there, and you're concentrating so much on what you're doing. Chris Evans going to get him going again. The green flag is back out. Speed check. They go pretty quick here. As you see, uh, Dodson go to the outside quick. Yep. I mean, I'm still impressed. I mean, I know we've only run a few laps here, but Chris Evans is just... His car looks so strong right now. Yeah, his car is uh, real good. Looks like it's cut through the center pretty good. Maybe it's a little free off, though. That's the only uh, part that uh, looks out of shape, just a little bit free on the car. Yeah, he's drifting up a little bit higher than everybody else. Yeah, but we're right after caution. He might have a little build up or it. Right. With these cars, you run bleeders in the right side, so the stagger may not have 
blown up on the right side like he, wanted, like he wants it right now. Now Greg Edwards is down on the bottom of the track as well as Eddie Johnson and Mike Lee in the East Coast Monte Carlo. Well, I would bet we're going to start seeing some uh, caution. I mean, not cautions, but some jack and go pit stops here pretty soon. We see a battle for the lead as Greg Edwards looking to the inside. Chris, uh, once he gets some heat in his tires now, it looks like yeah. he can't quite keep it on the bottom. Like yep. I just can't get over this racetrack. I mean, I'm, you can see the whole thing. It, 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 it's lit up. It's no dust, no dirt, no water. Yeah, you know, looks like he's got Mike Buffin coming back here. Yeah, trying, come, to trying to get Lane back to the pit field and some more wounded cars here coming up. Here we go, little in car. Getting down to the inside here in the Coca-Cola in car camera. Oh, there's some run. contact for you on the in car. That's a shocker at Southside Speedway. Yes, sir. Full contact speedway. <laughs> <laughs> But you can just hear the car. I mean, you drive in, you drive pretty far down the corner, but you use that brake. Look at the front of the car and just dive down when you jump on the brake. Yeah, it's like a teeter totter dive down. Dive yep. Back. But you know, you got to do all that and you got to keep that rhythm while you do it. If not, you'll never get through the middle of the corner. You know, Frankie? Exactly. You guys know more than I do. And what a pain it is at Southside if you got one that's not him. Anthony yeah, Wilson. I'm telling you. Now, this is Anthony Wilson's first time at yeah, Southside. He's a Speedway. rookie. He has some dirt experience, but. This is asphalt, a little bit different. You gotta Whoa. take that time. He's got Danny Edwards coming up too. And Rodney Estes, who is a veteran of this track, as they do battle. Danny Edwards in the skeleton car coming Whoa. up. Whoa! Here we go. Whoa. I think I, Bubba Farman, Bubba Farmer had 12. looped it already. Uh oh. Over here in uh, turn number four. Well, the 98 backed right on into that other car, didn't it? Yeah. And uh, that preceded the K95 car of Anthony Wilson getting on the binders. He looped it. Larry Morgan as well. Chris Evans still leading this thing. Chris Doing Evans is still leading here on lap number 19. Got to cheer for the South Boston. Boys. One more lap, guys, and I bet we're going to start seeing some guys come in. You know, I don't know if coming in right away is the, is the deal or would you stay out? If you're, let's say you're a, a Let's take Eddie, for instance, because he we've seen him do it last year to be able to put the field a lap down. Oh, well, here we go. And it's the shot we saw before, but I think Anthony Wilson's trying to dive to the inside. Yeah, he sees he sees, he sees the wreck. He sees the wreck, and he just, uh, Rodney Estes got to him. Just It doesn't take a whole lot either. No, in, the, in everybody's defense here, I mean, Anthony saw it. Rodney probably didn't see what was going on at the time, and, you know, Edgar, you see a wreck, you got to pick your spot, you got to go through it. Well, by, yeah. the, by the time Rodney saw it, it was, it was too late. late. He did. And Rodney, uh, Rodney uh, Estes almost got into the front end of the number 12 above a farmer. As you see, this happening pretty much in front of the field as they come through here and trying to get through that one little opening. I mean, as you see in that in-car camera shot, you just don't have that much time. Boy, they're all bundled up here at Southside Speedway for round one of the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series. After 19 of 100, there's your top five. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back here at Southside Speedway. And the lights go out on the pace car here in round one of the Mid-Atlantic Championship Series in the newly renovated Southside Speedway. Of course, man, we're just in awe. Uh, all three of us here in the booth have been coming to Southside Speedway for many, many years. And uh, to see the change, it almost looks like a half-mile track compared to a third-mile track from the changes. It is. I mean, there's concrete in the infield. You see that? I mean, your car doesn't sink down to jack stands there's anymore. There's a house in there. It's yeah. not a bathroom either. <laughs> <laughs> and the green flag is back out. Chris right. Evans keeps getting some good jumps. I mean, real good. His car working very well. Of course, he did very well in the modifieds when he was running here at Southside Speedway. And of course, they're running through some of the stage drive. That's what you see the smoke. It's not the cars. Eddie looking to the outside. outside. Johnson's starting to work that high side already. Uh -oh. And guess what, oh, folks? Wait. We got some pit stops. I told you, lap 20, we would start seeing some pit stops, and we're going to have Chris Evans, Greg Edwards, Mike Lee, and Chris Dotson come down pit road for Jack and Go. And Eddie Johnson will go to the front. Richard, Richard Jarvis, Jarvis will be second. I mean, this is Richard Jarvis's first time at Southside Speedway. And to qualify where he did. Oh, Chris Evans yep. comes out. Only lost one. 
Well, it just, he hadn't really lost. I mean, he lost a little bit, but you got to remember now. He comes out behind, and Bugs Harefield comes in, as well as Tommy Cherry. Wow. A lot of these guys are coming in early. Mike Bufkin back in the Coca-Cola and Clark camera. Ooh. Whoa, he almost got in the He drove her down in there. Yes, sir. I'm not scared. <laughs> I'll go. Take her in there, Mike. Take us for a ride. To the inside. Oh! oh. Needed a caution. Man. Okay. <laughs> well, no one got stuck in the pits for the jack and go. But that's one of those deals there. Mike runs down that straightaway there, and he sees Anthony a little bit higher up on the racetrack. Looks like he's going to give him that inside line, and Mike turns to drive underneath of him. Anthony doesn't see him and comes right down across him, and that's just... That's just you're just going to have to make laps at Southside Speedway yeah. to get used to that. That's, That's why I like the in-car cameras, guys, is because it gives you the feeling like you're sitting there in the seat. I mean, that's exactly what it's, you see. It's, now watch. We'll see it from another angle, of course. Like Mike, you can see Mike. it right there. Mike's got the front wheels locked up. You can right. see where the brakes, you know, the tires stopped turning. He did everything to do to keep from hitting him. But yeah, it looked like Mike drove way down in there expecting to have, have the room. And it right. It wasn't there. He gives Anthony Wilson again, his first. Well, you see right here, see where he's all the way up one, and yeah, he comes right across the front of the car there, and it's just, it's one of those deals. It's not intentional, but it's just getting around Southside Speedway. You need, that's where the only experience. The telltale sign is the white line. Yeah, on the track. And the now Mike was, Mike was a little bit up, I up say, on the racetrack yeah. too, but as you see, he starts coming across the bottom now when. Mike drove down in the corner. That's the time to get on the brake. He still has a chance to come to the rumble strip right. to get down to the bottom. But that's just. It looked like it looked like Mike actually drove it in a little hotter than. Right. Thought. It's just. After 23 of 100 laps, Eddie Johnson in the lead. There's your top five. We'll be right back. Mid Atlantic Championship Series Round One at Southside Speedway. Of course, uh, refresh your memory. There's going to be an eight-race series between Southside and Langley as the green flag comes back out. And the Ford Taurus of Eddie Johnson. It's a good jump on uh, Richard Jarvis. You saw the number 92 of Chris Evans. He is a lap down after a uh, green flag yep. jack and go. R and Richard Jarvis oh, coming Jarvis. in. Here comes Richard Jarvis. It's going to be the 51 of Rusty Wood, who is going to be second currently. He is right behind the 92 of Evans. Of Wayne As Patterson, it is. Wayne Patterson comes in. And you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, five. Got Down and away. Battle for second as Rusty Wood and Jim Sink. Now, I'll tell you what this does for me, folks. Okay, It might be a little confusing to know who's where and when because but of the jack and go, but. As you see, Eddie's on the racetrack now. Jarvis came in and made his stop and go. He's one lap down. But he's just, behind, he's just behind Eddie. So when Eddie comes in, all these guys are going to be right back where they need to be. And Chris Evans is on the same lap as Richard Jarvis, the number 64. Correct. Correct. Now, when Eddie pits, that just puts everybody back in the same spot. So I believe that'll make either. That'll make Rusty Wood the leader and the Richard Jarvis and them on the, on the front of the lead lap. Correct. They'll be, they'll can, be folks. Stick with us because it can in, get confusing. In, It'll they'll be yeah. on the tail end tail of end the of lead, lead lap. But I will tail tell you this, folks. And this is a battle between uh, Danny Edwards and Phil Warren in his Chevrolet. But what it's doing is it making these guys race for 100 Jim laps. Jim right. Coming in. Jim Eddie Sink's coming. Johnson's Eddie's already in. went Eddie's in. in and out now. Now see. So now Eddie is he's on second. His, well, because you know, he he's not a second yet because not everybody's come in. Rusty Wood in the 51 is still the leader. Yes. He's on the tail end of the but lead But he lap. came out with the same pack of cars. All these guys right. have come down pit road. They're just on the tail end these of the guys lead are lap. All on the tail They're end not of the lead lap. Right. right. They are not a lap down. They're on the tail end of the lead lap. Rusty right. Wood. Here comes uh, Anthony Wilson down on pit road for his jack and go. But they are battling. Richard Jarvis doing a great job for a, a young driver. Never, uh, I mean, seen never been to before. Southside Speedway. But he raced those dirt cars up in Maryland, so he's used to a lot of horsepower. As a battle, folks, Tommy Cherry and Mike Lee. Mike Lee's been in the pits. So is Tommy Cherry. I mean, Tommy Cherry doing an excellent job for the first time being at Southside well, Speedway. Well, he's running East Carolina. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a tough. As we go inside the Jack Links Meat Snacks. We won't even go into sponsored that. Sponsored in-car camera. And Mike Lee goes to the inside. But guess what, folks? 
Anthony trouble. Wilson's there, and whoa, trouble up in front of him. Oh, Warner breaks. Here we go. Trouble in front of him. It's uh, Greg Edwards and Henry Jones, and they get together on the oh, back stretch again. Here we go. Watch, Watch out. Right Tommy in front of Mike Lee. You see him throw his hand up. Doesn't want anybody else to uh, run Tommy into the back of him. Tommy got a piece of the fence down the back straightaway, just trying to get out of the way. Tommy Cherry got it. Yeah, it looked like it. Henry Jones. Yep. And I'm not, I don't think that these guys were the cause of it. They just got caught up in it. I saw someone spin. I just saw sparks. I don't know who was the cause. And Henry it may Jones, have been Henry. He may have cut that left front down. He limps it in. And that may have been why they got together on the back stretch as well. Right. And we'll call down to the truck and see if we can't get a couple replays here in just a moment. He's searching feverishly as they go to work on Henry Jones' car. Is Monte Carlo bent up? They're gonna be some well, body men. They're gonna be doing some work this week. Well, see, half of it straightened itself out right there. Popped the hood off. Aha! Uh -huh. right? Guess oh, what? Wait a minute. I knew I saw somebody spin. Larry Morgan. But guess what? Had a little help. Had a little help from uh, Danny Edwards there. May have been the same situation going in a little hard. Well, Larry it's Morgan got on the brakes a little bit too much. It. It's so hard to. to and here's how it ended. Both cars seem to be drifting towards the middle. Not exactly. I think sure. what happened there is and Henry's coming down pit road. And look at Tommy Cherry. He made it. He, he made, made it. it. He just kicked up a little dust. Kicked up the dust. I think Henry was trying to come down pit road because now you enter on the back stretch. Right. And, and Greg wasn't. Didn't see him. Right. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Wasn't expecting him to make a left turn right there in the back stretch. We've never done it this outside, so. Right. It's right. the first time. A very, very chilly afternoon as you see. Oh, about 5,000 plus. 32 of 100 have been complete. Rusty Wood, your leader now. Danny Edwards.